Hello there, I'm Eric, and in this video we're going to be talking about Google Sites. And we're going to do this as part of a larger course in getting teachers and other educators online using Google Classroom and other G Suite Google for Education project uh, products uh, to get started teaching and learning online. And in this video, we're going to be discussing one of the first steps in a larger part of a course, and we're going to be creating a Google site, a website for your classes. Um, most of this course is going to be focused on Google Classroom, and it's important to note at this point that you technically don't need to make a website for your class, but um, as a learning designer and someone that's done this for several different types of classes, several different types of online learning, it really helps uh, to have that static website uh, for your students to go to and have a starting place and to have classroom a place where you can go see your coursework. So you can have some static stuff about you. Things are always in the same space. You'll notice when we get into classroom, the more things you put into classroom, the further down they go in the stream. Um, it, teachers can take in and out assignments. Discussions can uh, get big and disappear. So it's really nice from the student's perspective. And plus for, for teachers too, because you have some static place that you can add and subtract different courses that maybe you're teaching more than one course and you have a place to um, put everything in one spot, right? You don't have to double up on your classwork and in your content in your Google Classroom stuff. So in this in this video, we're going to go through about how to make that Google site and integrate it into your Google Classroom. Okay. Okay. A couple of things uh, before we get started. Um, have you gotten to know Google Sites, the basics of how it works, uh, the functionalities of it? Can you feel like you're comfortable going around the, the interface of Google Sites? If You could probably survive this video just fine if um, you have confidence, but if these questions scare you, you might want to hop back a step or two in this course or find a previous video for this so you can uh, get more used to the actual Google Sites, what it is, what it can do, and how to navigate around it first. All right. All right. So in this video, we're going to be doing six things, right? Six steps. And you're going to be able to kind of uh, see how the steps are going as we kind of muster along. I'm going to be showing you a video uh, desktop taking you through step by step. Uh, of these six steps and you can follow along and hopefully um, you can skip back and forth between the the video you can scrub back and forth uh, and find that some of these six steps uh, something that you may have missed going through All right <clears throat> and of those six steps we're going to create a Google site we're going to name that site we're going to add some basic very basic content to it we're going to add and give access to your site to possible collaborators and then we're going to add a menu system a page and a sub page and then we're going to publish to the web and explain what all those processes mean as we go through together <laughs> all right should we get started then all right with all things google you go to something.google.com and it's make super simple. If you want to make a website, you go to sites.google.com. Important thing to note here that sites.google.com is a legacy thing. Um, you could make websites with a Google platform for many, many years and they made it into a new version, new Google Sites. Um, I think it was roughly about 2017 or 2018. And there are still some legacy sites out there, and you can still use that old Google Sites. So if you go to Google Sites and you don't see this new refreshed icon, and it it's, looks, looks a little bit old, like some old uh, hyperlinks, you may be looking at the old version. Um, so if you go to sites.google.com, it looks old. 
you want to make sure you hit a slash new Google dot uh, sites that Google dot com slash new you make sure you're in the new one you can also you'll see a menu option to go to the new sites if you run into the old one as well another thing to mention here is when you make sites, if you're a teacher in an institutional account, uh, perhaps you work for a university or a K-12 school that has their own domain and their own Google G Suite um, administration, you will need to make a site inside using your institutional account for your students to be able to access it properly. Um, thing about Google Sites is, is that it helps house an intranet of things. Uh, every site that you make inside of your, your domain, which is the accounts list under your institution, um, depending on the settings that the administration has on those sites, can may either not be shared or viewed publicly or um, accessed from outside personal accounts and vice versa too. So you start making a website with your personal account students with institutional accounts may have restrictions on being able to see those websites outside of their domain. Uh, in fact, that's quite the standard procedure for many institutions. So to check on that, you go up to this corner here, you look at your account. Um, right now I'm logged into my personal account. I'm going to log into my, um, quick, just switch accounts over to my my institutional account and you can see that I have a whole other list of websites available to me here. I'm going to switch back to a personal account there. <clears throat> right, so you can see a list of the sites that you have or have access to. You can uh, and also start new websites by just simply clicking a button. It's just like Docs or sheets or slides or any other Google products. It's so easy to make. So we'll just go ahead and make a new blank um, Website you just hit the plus button and Just like that There you go. That's our first step <laughs> You've actually created a site <clears throat> Oh my goodness, my internet dropped out. Really? Just a moment then, I'll be right back. Okay, there it is, it's back. And here we have our new site. It's untitled at the moment, um, and it's blank. And we have our, our, our interface here to start working on our, our page. Let's move, so we have our Google site. Let's move on to the next step. We're gonna name the site. Now naming the site is just a title for your purposes, like naming a, a Word document. Uh, a title of it. It's a little bit different be because the name of it is for you, but when you publish it on the web, you're also going to give it a URL. That's not the same thing as giving it a name. But it will try and take your name and use it for your URL to begin with. 
So I'm going to talk a little bit about some naming conventions that a lot of institutions use and that you might want to use to help um, name your website properly. Right. So if you have an institutional account, um, the best way to name your site or the one that you're going to be using and putting on the web for students to use is just use your email before the at symbol. So mine at this institutional account would be my name, <laughs> right? So easy peasy. If you if you're at a university, you might have a something something at 9090.edu. Good way to go is just take that first truncated part of it before the at, right? And there you go. You have a name. So as soon as you entered it, you have it in two places. You have the name of it, and then it'll it'll appear here on the top, which will turn into a menu bar. And so it will always be visible. If you want, you can add a, a logo here as well. OK. <clears throat> Let's add some content to our page, which is pretty easy to do. Um, you can name the title. Again, if this is your personal website where you're going to be putting all of your links to your Google classes, a name is a good thing to put in. I'm just going to put in something like about me. I added some text here. Let me change that text around. Make it a title. I'll add an image. And I'll screen here. Bam, there it is. And then I'll just put in another text box. Now, good thing to know about you can add these things, right? You click on them and it adds them automatically, but you can move this stuff around very easily. You have to look for the, the dotted hamburgers, the dots around. You can move those around, up and down, these sections. And also, you can take text out and move it around as well. Right. When you click on things, you can resize them by dragging, clicking and dragging bubbles that you see around images, text, and other objects in there. So I have some text, so I'm just going to put in some fake text here. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. So, right? <clears throat> you also have these quick layouts that are very convenient. Um, a picture and some text, two pictures and some text, etc., etc. Um, play around with that. It's um, very convenient to use those things as well. And you have, of course, complete integration with your Google Drive and Google Docs. So everything that's in your drive, again, it's walled off from your personal and the institutional account, but everything that's in your drive on the same account will be easily brought into your website. So you can easily bring in stuff from your Google Classroom too, which makes it super, super convenient to make uh, content available to all your students and potentially uh, potential students um, as well. That's another thing that's good about having this website, make some content available to students that aren't actually in your class, if you so wish. OK, we've got some content. Where are we going next? Let's add some collaborators. Collaborators. <clears throat> right. Adding collaborators is super easy. On the top here, you have um, a preview, the link, and then a person with a plus. Almost all Google um, Docs side sheets, all, all products in the G Suite have the same icon for sharing and adding collaborators. <clears throat> So just click on that plus button. And if you're an institutional account, you're going to see some other things listed here, right? Um, 
perhaps you can publish when you publish your website this is saying uh, everyone on in your institution can see it only collaborators can see it or only people that you specify so if you want to add a collaborator which means you want to be able to add another teacher uh, maybe um, a student assistant or a teaching assistant I'm sorry um, or this is a group website for a bunch of classes just add those particular email addresses here and click send. Now you can add them as an editor or only view the published site. So you want to set this up so it's only be viewed by a few students. You can do so. You just have to add them individually to get, for them to get access when they're logged in. Easiest thing to do is to make it viewable to everybody in the institution and um, only give editing rights to yourself and maybe one or two other people just in case. Um, if you're in my same institution and you're watching this video to get training at our particular institution, you can add me, if you wanted to, uh, as a editor on your website so I can get access to your site to edit it, things for you. That makes it very easy for me to give you help um, should you need it um, something done to your website in the future. So just an option. You can add me as a collaborator and um, I'd have access to help edit your site if that need be. Okay. That's adding collaborators or setting permission so people to see your website. Let's move on to the next step. Let's add a menu. All right. Back in our website here, we have three things. We insert content, like text and pictures and things from our Google Drive. We can add pages. And this is just like any website. It's not just one page. It's a collection of web pages to make a website. That's why it's the sites, right? So um, here we can add different pages which would make a menu system on your site automatically. And it's super easy and super convenient. So you go to your pages, look down here on this plus sign, you can add a new link or add a new page. A link is if you want to add a link to some other resource on the open web. So a link to a Wikipedia page or an outside website that's free of access to everybody. Uh, again, if you want to link to a Google site <laughs> outside of your institution you might run into an issue but if you wanted to link anything that's on the open web you can do so as well I'll just show you what that might look like let's add my website Eric's website give it a name give it the link there it is and just like that, it's added a link to a menu, which will now be on the top of your um, website. Let's add a page, and let's call this one Classes. Now, if you're teaching at an institution, you have classes, you probably have more than one, so you're going to first add classes. Now, if you wanted to, you could put in what's called a custom path. This is the URL, um, the link name um, for finding it by in directly entering the URL into a browser. You don't really need to mess around with that if you don't want to, but for, me, my, for my own pet peeve, I don't like uh, spaces because they get turned into hashtags, or not hashtags, um, um, underbars. Um, for this. So I like to go in and take them out or put something really simple in here. All right, click done. Boom. All right, we already have classes. Now you might have more than one class, so you want to add menu items. You can nest these menu items on, together. So under classes, we're going to go to add sub page. All right, so let's just say, I don't know, anything that comes to mind digital literacy, a class I teach. Boom, digital literacy. Now we have under classes, digital literacy. Now, thing to note, 
you have classes here that might be blank, could be confusing to some students. You might want to add in a menu here as well. So, for example, you could put in a button, digital literacy, and you can link to your site. It gives It's very convenient. It gives you pages that are available on your website. You just click the one that you want, and now you have a button on classes. So you go to just classes to take you to digital literacy. Or you can just go to your top menu now and go back down to digital literacy as well. OK, where are we now? Created our site, gave it a name, added some content, maybe added a collaborator or two. And we added our menu. Now we're going to publish to the web. Now this is a very important topic for um, Google Sites, which is slightly different if you're used to doing things like Sheets or Docs and Slides in Google. Uh, because publishing to the web is, um, when it, just like Google Docs and Google Sheets, it's automatic in that it saves changes being made to your Google site, but for those changes to be seen by everyone on the web, you have to publish it to the web. So what it does is it takes those files, um, that those images, that text that you put into your document, and it puts them available to be seen by everyone on the internet. It publishes them to the internet. So to, for, your, for your site to be seen, you have to publish your site. And this is this button here. Another important thing is that if you ever went back to your website and added things or took out things or made any changes, you'll have to publish your site again for those changes to be viewed by the general public or people, anybody that you want to be able to see that's, that, uh, that new content. So you're going to be constantly changing things on your website, but when you do make changes and you want those changes to be seen by everyone, you just simply hit the publish button. Another thing of note is you can preview your site very easily by just hitting this preview button and you can see it on different size screens. Uh, this is called responsive design and you'll see that some content will stagger, some content will move one way or the next. Google's pretty good about resizing your images for you but sometimes it does not work so you could test it out to make sure it works on all these size screens. All right. Last thing, publishing your site. You hit the publish button. Now, this is going to make a URL for your website, right? And like I said before, a good note of practice is to use your um, institutional email account as it is before the at symbol. Um, I have Eric Hawkinson already, so it won't let me do this. So because this is the internet and the internet, depending on where you are making this website, you can only have one URL of one type. It's very un It has to be unique. So um, if you take another name, no one else could use that uh, on the internet on the, uh, or on the internet for your institution. So pick something that's good, and if you're going with the institution, use your uh, email address and name to make it easy for students um, to find your website. Right, and after you've entered a name, you can recheck and manage the permissions. This is the same thing with add collaborators to see who's available to see it before you publish it. And um, this option, this last option here, do not show it on search engines. This will probably not be available if you're making one in an intranet or institutional account. Last thing to do is just hit publish. I'm not going to do that now uh, for this website. And then you are done making your first website. We're going to come back to this um, later on in the course so we can add content to this that's relevant to your Google Classroom, link your Google Classroom, and um, add content such as maybe breakout rooms or other things that you, you might want to add 
to give extra uh, features and avail um, functionality to your Google Classroom. Again, my name's Eric. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.